Hello class, welcome to this lesson on 6.3. We're going to be talking about logarithms today. So what are logarithms and how are they evaluated? So we want to talk about evaluating these, uh, these logarithms, simplifying them, um, and seeing how they're related to the exponential function and models that we looked at in the previous lessons. So we're going to talk about common logarithms, the uh, logarithm, logarithmic function, and natural logs. All right, so last lesson we focused on exponential functions and exponential models. We looked at graphs and key features of these exponential functions, and we looked at applications of them in the models. So this lesson we're gonna focus on another operation, the logarithm. So in order to solve any equation, we need to use this idea of the inverse or the opposite operation. So when you think of inverse, think of the opposite operation. So we have a few equations given below. A lot of these equations you know how to solve based on algebra one or based off of some of the previous lessons. So x plus one equals three is a very simple equation. A lot of these equations are very simple because they only involve one operation, right? So this first one, x plus one equals three. Well, we know that's gonna be two because two plus one is three. But if we were gonna, to, if we were gonna solve this, right? Then we would have to go ahead and uh, do the opposite of addition, right? So the inverse of addition is subtraction. So we're going to subtract by one on both sides, and that's how we get two. Now, in order to get rid of the negative two in the next equation, I'm going to do the opposite of that, or the inverse of that, which is adding. Uh, the next e equation, we have two times x equals four. Well, we want to do the inverse of multiplication which is going to be division. All right, now we have x divided by three. Remember the fraction bar means division. So x divided by three equals four. So what's the uh, opposite or the inverse of division? Well, we have to multiply. So the, the opposite of dividing by three is multiplying by three. So we're going to multiply by three. And then the square root of x equals three. This was our previous unit, the radical unit, uh, radical functions. So the only way to get rid of a square root is to square both sides. So we have x equals nine here, three squared. Now if I had, I didn't include this equation, but if I had x squared equals four, well, we know that to uh, do the inverse of squared, the only way to get rid of the squared is with a square root. And in this case, there's a technicality because you have to include the plus or minus version. But if we were just doing the principal square root, it should be square root. All right, so notice that in all these equations, we needed an inverse or opposite operation in order to cancel it out. So what about the next equation, two to the x equals eight? Well, this is an exponential equation so we've looked at these equations in this unit. However, we haven't talked about how to solve this. However, you do know that you could say that x is three because we know that two to the third is eight, right? So in this case, we know that x equals three. However, if it was two to the x equals 10, and eh, that might not be so easy. So we're gonna have to uh, show you how to solve this. So we need, an in we need to figure out an inverse for this. So the inverse operations we know undo each other Addition and subtraction are considered inverse operations. Multiplication and division are inverse. Squaring and finding the square root are inverse operations as well. And the last one, which is this one, we call that we call this operation where we raise something to the x power, we call that exponentiation. Okay, so exponentiation is what we're doing here when we, when, when we have two raised to the x power. So you're literally raising it to that power. And the opposite of this is the logarithm. So the logarithm is the only way that we can get rid of this, x, this um, equation so that we can solve for x. So our goal here in solving this two to the x equals eight is to essentially cancel out uh, the two so that we can solve for x and get it by itself, right? The goal is to get x by itself. 
So how do we do that? With the logarithm. So what is the logarithm? The logarithm base b of x is defined as follows. So this right here is read as log base b of x. So that's how you read it, log base b of x, or the logarithm base b of x. So that is equal to y if and only if b to the y equals x. And then there's some restrictions on b, like b has to be positive, it can't be 1, and x has to be positive. So the logarithm function, the logarithmic function, which we call y equals log base b of x, is the inverse of the exponential function y equals b to the x. So then in that case, what's the inverse of y equals 2 to the x? Well, the inverse of that is y equals, well, now we know that b is 2, right? The base is 2. Well, we know that this is my base, right? So we know that this is going to be log base 2, my base is b, which is 2, of x. So these two functions are inverses. Okay, so now notice that we have the graph of b to the x here, where b is a number. Um, so in this case, this is the graph of 2 to the x. And this one in green is the graph of log base 2 of x. So notice that they're inverses of each other because if you look at the previous unit when we talked about inverses, they're a reflection about the line y equals x. And if you look at that, they're, they're definitely mirror reflections about the line y equals x. And so it makes sense that these two are inverse functions. All right, so now, uh, for example, let's give you another example. If we had 3 to the y is equal to x, then uh, in this case, if you want to convert this in terms of logs, well, we know that the base, that's my base, my base is 3. So I know that the base of my logarithm also has to be 3. All right, now the answer to the problem goes inside the logarithm, and the exponent is the is what's equal to the logarithm. So what does the logarithm do? Well, the logarithm retrieves the exponent. So notice that whenever every time we do the log, we end up retrieving the exponent. All right. So now this right here, this first form is referred to as the exponential form. The second form is referred to as the logarithmic form. Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward as far as the naming is concerned because one has an exponent, one has a log um, logarithm. So we're going to talk about how to convert between those two forms. But before we do that, we're going to talk about what those forms are. So the exponential form, notice, shows that a base is raised to an exponent equals some kind of result. So in this case, you have some kind of number raised to an exponent and it's equal to another number. All right, so like if you had 2 to the 3 equals 8, right? That's an example of, of something that is an exponential form. Another one uh, would be like 3 to the 2nd equals 9. So that would be something that is an exponential form. Now contrast that with something that is in logarithmic form. Well, this shows that the log of the result with the given base equals the exponent. All right, so in the case of the exponential form, we said 3 squared equals 9, right? Where a is 3, b is 2, and c is 9. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and actually color code this so you can see what we're referring to here. So we'll say a is the red. and c is 9, which is, so it's color-coded. So now in the logarithmic form, we have log base a. a is 3 here. So the base, remember, goes on the bottom. 
and then whatever it's equal to goes inside the logarithm so that's 9 equals and then whatever the exponent is is your answer to the logarithm so this is the logarithmic form of that of 3 squared equals 9 so notice that I what I, we said earlier the log retrieves the exponent okay so that's an important note to keep in mind the logarithm retrieves the exponent so what we mean by that is that the log is always going to be equal to the exponent in the original problem so it equals the exponent okay so that's very important to keep in mind that the logarithm is essentially trying to figure out what the exponent is so like 3 to the what power is going to give me 9 right so that's what the logarithm at, uh, answers so the, the, the purpose of the logarithm is you got to figure out 3 to the what power equals 9 and the logarithm tells you that it's it's 2 3 to the 2 is 9 okay so the um, now that we know the uh, exponential and log form and I give you a couple examples of that um, now when we're looking at the log form when it's written in this form, the number that was the result of the exponential equation, which in this case is, you know, uh, C, right? That's the number that was the result. Notice that that goes inside the logarithm. The number that goes inside the logarithm is referred to as the argument, okay? So that's the argument. So I'll give you an example. If you had log base 5, of 25 equals 2 well then 25 is my argument okay so that's just another uh, vocab term. so if they if they mention argument then that's what they mean so we know that this is the base right so that's a base this is the logarithm Uh, so we got logarithm, base, argument, and what's this again? Well, we said that that was the exponent. Remember, the the logarithm the logarithm retrieves the exponent. So each each um, number in here has a vocab term associated with it, or what it is. All right. So why exponentials and logarithms? Remember that in the previous lesson, six point two. We talked about exponential models. We talked about why exponential functions are useful for certain applications. We know that they're uh, useful for applications in which you're multiplying by the same number or dividing by the same number, or in essence, growth and decay. This is useful when we're talking about compound interest, population growth and decline, appreciation slash depreciation, like for example, when a car depreciates in value over time, etc. Now the logarithm and the logarithmic functions are useful in applications where there are really small things and really large things. So what do we mean by that? Well, remember that the logarithm retrieves the exponent. So in applications where you need really large exponents because you have really large numbers, like say, really large numbers, right? Where you're gonna need the exponent for that, where you convert it to scientific notation or whatever, and you need to just convert it to an exponent, that's when we use a logarithm function. So, for example, when we're talking about intensity of sound and the decibel scale, the decibel scale um, is a scale that is used to rate the intensity of a sound. All right, so when we're talking about the decibel scale in physics, uh, what we mean is, for example, like if you have a sound that is 20 decibels uh, in magnitude, then this means that the intensity of the sound um, is actually um, 10 times greater than the sound pressure that we can normally hear, uh, like the, the, of the quietest sound that we can hear. If it's 40 decibels, then it's 100 times. 
So notice that when this number doubled, right, uh, it actually multiplied by 10, right? It went from 10 to the 1 power to 10 to the 2 power. So when it doubled, the intensity of sound multiplied by 10. So it went from times 10 to times 1,000. You see how large that is? And then if I do 60 decibels, then that's going to be 10 to the third. So the number multiplied even more. So we're multiplying by the same number. And if we convert it back to the decibel scale, we need logarithms to do that. So the, the uh, logarithm is, is taking something that will grow really large and converting it to a smaller number uh, in order to make it more compact. And we use this kind of scale in physics and uh, when we're talking about intensity of sound, for example. Now the uh, intensity of earthquakes uh, in earth science would be another application. Uh, earthquakes have so much energy and if we take that energy and we convert it to like a scale with, you know, then we can take that energy with a high exponent value and then uh, convert it to, you know, some kind of scale. Now another example of logarithms, logarithms and logarithmic functions is when you're talking about the pH of a solution. So uh, we know that in chemistry, the pH is the negative logarithm of the hydrogen ion concentration. So what that means is that you're going to have so many hydrogen ions in a, in a given solution, so many of those ions. And in order to convert something that is a really something that is a, there's a huge amount of it in a solution, then you got to retrieve the exponent. So um, in order to convert it to something that is more tangible, a smaller number like pH. So like pH scale is from, you know, 1 to 14, for example. Um, you know, just as an example, you can get any number like 2 or, or 3 or 4. And in this case, uh, the pH of the patient's blood would be a perfect uh, medical application in there because that needs to be regulated in the body. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, solve for x in these equations using what we talked about with logarithms. So how do we go about doing it? And remember that this one was a question mark that we did earlier. So this is the exponentiation operation. We're taking 2 and we're raising it to the x, and that equals 8. So the only way that we can get rid of the 2 in order to get x by itself is to do the logarithm. So what we're going to do is we know that the base is 2. So this is my base. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the log base 2 on both sides. So we take the log base 2 of both sides. And I'll go ahead and rewrite it here just to, you know, so it looks more clear. Okay, so that's what it looks like when we take the log of both sides. Just like you divide by both sides, you multiply by both sides, we're doing the log operation on both sides. What kind of log? Log base 2. Why do we choose 2? Because the numbers have to match, okay? So these two numbers have to match. Now, if those two numbers match, then at this point, log base 2 of 2 to the x, the, the log base 2 and the 2 actually cancel because they're inverse operations. Remember, inverses or opposite operations cancel. So we no longer have a log base 2, and therefore we got x by itself. So now x is equal to log base 2 of 8. And that's what my x is. We're going to talk about how to actually put this on the calculator later. But we know that this value is going to give you 3. Um, but we can actually find it. We can actually look for it right now because let's convert this to the, um, well, we know that if we convert this to the exponential uh, version, you're going to get 2 to the x equals 8. Okay, so we know that this is going to be 3. Okay, just because we know that 2 to the third is 8. But we'll show you how to do that on the calculator uh, as well for decimals. All right, so we got x is equal to log base 2 of 8, which is equal to 3. Now let's do the next one. So we have 4 to the x equals 10. Again, we have an exponentiation operation. The only way to get rid of, get, getting rid of exponentiation is to do the logarithm. Now we know that the base is 4, so we're going to do the log base 4 on both sides. So log base 4 of 10 as well. 
So now the 4 and the log base 4 cancel. And now I have x equals log base 4 of 10. And that is my answer. Now this is going to be a decimal. Uh, and therefore we can leave it like this. And then if they ask us to calculate it, we're going to have to use a calculator. All right, so we're going to talk about converting between the exponential and the logarithmic forms. So let's look at this first example. So we know that this first example um, is actually in the exponential form. So we want to convert that to the logarithmic form. So in order to do that, we need to uh, take the log of both sides. So basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to retrieve that exponent of 4. Okay, because remember that the logarithm retrieves the exponent, right? So in order to convert this to the logarithmic form, we're going to need to take the log of both sides because we want to retrieve that 4, the exponent of 4. So we're going to take the log base 3 of both sides. Okay, now when we take the log base 3 of both sides, now notice that these bases match, and so the log and the 3 cancel, leaving us with the exponent. So we got 4 equals log base 3 of 81. There you go. This is my uh, logarithmic form. Very simple. So to, conver to convert it to the logarith logarithmic form, you have to simply retrieve the exponent by canceling out the base by using the log of that base on both sides. So if we got something that's in logarithmic form like this, then what we have to do is we got to get rid of the logarithm. How do we get rid of the logarithm? Well, the, the way the opposite, remember that the exponentiation and inverses are opposite operations. So in order to get rid of a log, I need to exponentiate. So how do I do that? Well, the only way to get rid of this log, we know that this is a log base 10. So I have to take my base of 10 and I have to exponentiate on both sides. I have to raise it to that side. So I'm going to take, I'm literally going to take 10 and raise it to this left side. And that's exponentiation. So this is this right here, I'm exponentiating. And now whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. So I'm literally going to take 10 and I'm going to raise it to the third power. So on both sides, I have 10 raised to the log 1,000 power equals 10 raised to the third power. So I'll go ahead and rewrite this. So literally what I have now is that. So that's literally what I have on both sides. I raised both sides or I raised 10 to the both side, you know, to the left side, and I raised 10 to the right side power. And so now this log base 10, they match, and so they cancel. So now there's no more log. And so now we're left with 1,000 equals 10 to the third. And that's my exponential form, where we have something raised to an exponent. All right, go ahead and give it a try. Convert between the exponential and the logarithmic form. All right, so let's look at the exponential form and we're gonna see how it looks like if we convert it to the logarithmic form. Now we know that the uh, base is seven and the exponent is three. Remember our goal is to retrieve that exponent, right? To get to to get rid of it or so that we can have the exponent on the bottom, right? So we got to get rid of the seven. So in order to get rid of the seven, I have to take the log of both sides, but log base seven, so that way they match. All right, so now the seven and the log base seven, they match, so they cancel. Now I get the exponent by itself, which is exactly what I wanted. All right, that's my logarithmic form. So if I convert this to the log form, 
it would be log base three or base seven, I mean. 343 equals three. So notes that if you did this, if you did seven raised to the third equals 343, you would actually get the exponential form. That's just a quick little shortcut, but it's essential that you understand how to cancel stuff out when we're talking about logs and exponentials. All right, so the second part, if we wanna convert this to an exponential function, we gotta get rid of the log, right? And right now the log has a base of four in it. So the opposite of a log is exponent. So the opposite of a logarithm is exponentiating, uh, exponentiating aiding or exponentiation. So uh, we know that the base is four, so I'm gonna exponentiate on both sides with a base of four. So I'm gonna do four raised to that left side power and then four raised to that right side power. And so now I have something that looks like this, like that. So literally both sides are in the exponents now. And so now the four here matches, so they cancel, so there's no more log. So we got 16 equals four to the second power. All right, so the so we know that the log form is log base four of 16 equals two. And the exponent form is four to the two equals 16. All right, so now we're gonna talk about finding the value of a logarithmic expression. So uh, we're not gonna do this on the calculator. We're gonna actually do it out based off of what we know about exponents. So let's look at the first one. So if we wanna find the log base five of 125, what we have to do is, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it equal to x, okay? So we're gonna say that it's equal to x. And then we're gonna figure out what x is. So now we know that x is equal to this. So I can convert this to the exponential form. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna get rid of this log. Remember that the only way of getting rid of a log is the inverse of the log. The inverse of the log is the exponential. So we're gonna raise both sides. We're gonna raise five, which is the base here, to both sides power. Right, so now we got five raised to the log base five of 125 equals five to the x. And now those cancel leaving me with 125 equals five to the x power. So then you gotta ask yourself, well, five to what power is 125? Well, the answer is three. Five to the third power is uh, 125 because five times five times five is 125. So the answer to this log is three. All right, that takes care of our first one. Second one, we're gonna convert this to uh, an x, we're gonna convert this to uh, equal to x, and then we're gonna get rid of the log. The only way to, the way to get rid of this log is to exponentiate. So we're gonna do the base here, one fourth raised to that power, one fourth raised to that power. So now these cancel leaving me with 16 equals 1 fourth raised to the x power. All right, so there's my exponential. So 1 fourth raised to what power is gonna give me 16? So hopefully your exponent properties are good enough where you can actually kind of tell what this is, but we know that 1 fourth to the second is gonna be one over 16, right? So this is actually gonna be x equals negative two because um, you need to flip the one over four so that you get four over one. So this is actually going to be to the negative two power. Negative two is gonna flip it to four over one and then four squared is 16. 
So the answer to this is negative 2. All right. So now next one, log base 3 equals 0. Again, we're going to set this equal to x and solve. So we got to get rid of the log base 3. So I'm going to do 3 raised to both sides. 0 equals 3 to the x power. Now is there any number that I can plug in for the exponent here to get 0? If I plug in x equals 0, well we know that 3 to the 0 is 1. And so that can't work. So x cannot be equal to 0. We know that 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third, so that's not going to work. So you can't plug in negatives. You can't plug in positives. And if you try to plug in a fraction, well, that's just equal to the square root of 3, which again is not equal to 0. So this doesn't work either. So there is no number that you can plug in to get 0 here. Therefore, this has no solution. So therefore, um, <clears throat> we're going to have to say that this is undefined. Okay, So there is no solution uh, undefined, I guess you, you could say. So you can't take the log of zero. Okay, so that's not something that you can do. All right, now this one, log base two of two to the eight. Now remember that I told you that, that we mentioned that when we have a, the bases match, they end up canceling out, right? So when we cancel this out, we should get eight. All right, so we're gonna actually show that here. We're gonna show why they cancel out. Why is it that if I have 2 to the third equals 8, and I take the log of both sides, why is it that that cancels out uh, just like it, it would here, right? Well, we're going to find that out now. So we're going to set this equal to x. So now we have log base 2, 2 to the 8 equals x. The only way to get rid of this log base 2 is to do 2 raised to both sides. So I'm going to do 2 raised to that, 2 raised to that. So now this log, those match, so they cancel. So now we're left with 2 to the 8. We're just going to bring that down. Equals 2 to the x power. All right, so if 2 to the 8 is equal to 2 to the x, what does x have to be equal to? Well, x has to be equal to 8. Because the 2's match, so therefore x has to be 8. All right, so now we know that uh, x is equal to 8, and so the shortcut to this is if the bases match, you simply cancel them out and, give, and, and you get at 8 the number at the very end. So this only works if the bases match. All right, go ahead and give it a try. Uh, see if you can get the answer. All right, let's look at the first one. So what is the value of each logarithmic expression? So we're going to go ahead and set this equal to x. And then we got to get rid of the log base 3. So I'm going to do 3, the same base, raised to both sides power. That's going to cancel. 1 over 81 equals 3 to the x power. So then we got to use our exponent properties. 3 raised to what is 1 over 81? Now this is a fraction, right? So I know that my x has to be a negative number. Now 3 raised to what power is going to give me 81? Well, 3 raised to the 4th power is going to give you 81 because 3 to the 4th is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is 9 times 9, which is 81. Okay, so this is going to give you 4, but then it's negative because it's a fraction because you got to flip. All right, so this is equal to negative 4. All right, for B, I'm going to set this equal to X and then uh, solve that per usual. So we got to get rid of the log base 7, so we're going to do 7 raised to both sides to cancel out that log base 7. Give me negative 7 equals 7 to the x power. All right, is there any way uh, to get an exponent so that you do 7 raised to an exponent, 
gives you a negative number. So 7 raised to what is going to give you a negative number? Well, remember that if we plugged in x equals 0 uh, into this, anything to the 0 power is 1, right? So, this, so 1 is equal to 7 to the 0 power. So this is not going to work. We know that uh, if we plugged in 7 to the 1 power, that gives us 7. Well, you may think, okay, what if we plug in negative 1? Uh, into this. Well, remember that negative 1 is going to flip it. It's not going to do anything other than flip it. So it's just going to flip it to 1 over 7. So there's no way that you can get a negative number from this. So therefore, there is no solution and it's undefined. Okay, so no solution, it's undefined. So if you try to do this on the calculator, you're going to get an error. It's not going to be able to give you a number. All right, last one, log base 5 of 5 to the 9. Remember the property here that they cancel out, giving you 9. So we know that the answer is 9 right away, but uh, just go ahead and showing our work here. We set this equal to x. We're going to raise 5 to both sides to get rid of this. You have 5 to the 9 equals 5 to the x, so x has to equal 9. All right, now we're going to talk about two different types of logarithms. We're going to talk about the base 10 logarithm, also known as the common logarithm, and the natural logarithm. So the base 10 logarithm, as we mentioned earlier, is the common logarithm, and the symbol for that is just log x. So there's literally no number there. You don't see any number there. So usually it's not written as log base 10. Now, if you look at one of the previous problems, it was written as log base 10, but that's because we haven't introduced the common log yet until now. So from, from now on, we're going to rewrite, we're going to write anything that is log base 10 as log with no number into it at, at the bottom. So log X is the common logarithm. The next type of logarithm is the natural logarithm and that's the base E logarithm. So usually we don't write it as log base E, we write it as LN. Of x. So ln stands for logarithmus naturalis. In other words, the natural logarithm. So that's just uh, Latin, uh, and so that basically stuck, right? So we just called it ln instead of nl, okay? That's where it comes from. All right, so what is the value of each logarithmic expression to the nearest 10,000th? All right, so if we want to calculate this, this is where we're going to need a calculator. So the common log, remember that this is there's an invisible 10 there that we don't write. So if you see that log, just think, OK, well, that's an invisible 10. If you see an LN, that's an invisible E. OK. All right, so basically to do the log of 900, we will show you how to do this on the calculator. However, uh, let me show you how to convert it to the exponential form as well, okay, so that you can practice that. So we're going to call this x. So the only way to get rid of the logarithm is to exponentiate. So we're going to raise to the exponent. So we get 900 equals 10 to the x power. So we need to figure out 10 to the what power is going to give me 900. Now we know that 10 to the first power is 10, 10 to the second power is 100, and so we know 10 to the first is 10, 10 to the second is 100, and 10 to the third is 1,000. That's pretty close to 900, right? But not quite. So uh, we know that our answer is going to be between 2 and 3, but it's going to be closer to 3 than it is to 2, because 10 to the third is closer to 900 than 10 to the second. So we know that when we do this on the calculator, we're going to get a number that is close to 3, maybe 2.8, something like that, maybe 2.9, maybe 2.7, something like that. So let's go ahead and show you on the calculator. So uh, this is the TI30XS multi-view, very similar to the calculators that a lot, you know, the scientific calculators that you'll use in the class. So in order to use the log on here, well, there's a log key dedicated to that right here. So it's, it's uh, this second key uh, on the first column. So we got log 
and then we literally type in a thousand or 900 sorry we're doing the log of 900 close parentheses and then enter very simple look at that 2.95 we were saying that it was going to be close to three and we got 2.95 pretty good and uh, I bet you let's see did they say round to the nearest 10,000th so we got around to the nearest 10,000th so 2.95 uh, four so this is tenth, hundred, thousands, ten thousand. So two point nine five four two. So four decimals. All right, we're going to show you how to do this on another uh, alternative calculator. So if you have, for example, the multi-view calculator, some of you guys might have that one. The logarithm function, you have to hit second and then PRB because there's this log here. So second PRB, and then there's the log right there. And then the natural log is located there. You just hit the right arrow key, and then it, it, you can type in, uh, you can enter for the log. This actually has the E function as well, the E raised to a power and the LN. All right, but from now on, we're gonna be using the other uh, calculator, the TI-30 uh, for the demo here. All right, so now the next one that we want to look at is ln of e. So we're going to go ahead and set this equal to x. So we have ln e. And when I write the ln, I'm going to write it in cursive. So I'm going to write the l in cursive so that we're not, we're not confusing that with like a 1 or something, okay, or, a, or something else. So when I write the ln, I'll just write it like this. So ln of e equals x. Now we know that there's an invisible E here, so you can go ahead and write it out uh, for the intents of solving this. So the only way to get rid of getting rid of a log is to exponentiate. So we're gonna do we're gonna raise both sides, raise E to both sides, because those bases have to match. Okay, so now we have E to the ln E equals E to the X. Remember E is just a number. E is uh, like pi 2.71828 that was the number that we you know talked about in the previous lesson so think of e as pi just a number so now these this uh, bases match this e and this e so they cancel so we have e equals e to the x so if we have e's matching well this has an invisible power of one right so the this means that x has to equal one and in fact, that's the case here, x equals 1. So we're going to show you this on the calculator. So to do the um, natural log, that's just below the log key right here. All right, so hit natural log and then of e. Now to do the e, we have to hit second natural log. And then you are going to hit to the one power. We're going to make sure that that's to the one power. And then enter, and you're going to get one as your answer. All right, so then the next one. Now we're going to do the log of negative 1.87. So we're going to set that equal to x. So we have, remember, there's an invisible e here. So the only way to get rid of it is to do e raised to that power. So now these cancel leaving you with negative 1.87 equals e to the x. So we need to figure out a power that we raise e to to get negative. Remember that this cannot happen. We can't, we can't raise something to an exponent and get a negative number. That just, that's not gonna happen. Remember that even if we plug in a negative value for the exponent, that's just gonna flip the number. It's not gonna do anything else. So let's show you this on the calculator. You're gonna get no solution, you're gonna get an error. So if we do ln of negative 1.87, you're gonna enter and look, lo and behold, we get a domain error. So we got an error, because we can't do this. All right, so it's undefined or error, okay? All right, so what is the solution to each equation? Round to the nearest thousandth. So now we're 
ready to tackle some equations. Equations that involve 10 and natural log. So how do we do this? So we want to solve this equation. We're going to need to get rid of the 10 here. So we got to get rid of the 10 here because we need to get the exponent down to the bottom, right? We need the exponent to, we need to retrieve the exponent basically. Why do we need to retrieve the exponent? Because we want to solve for x. So in order to retrieve the exponent, we need the log. So we need to get rid of the 10. So in order to get rid of that 10, I'm going to do the log base 10 on both sides. And now the log and the 10 cancel. And now we have the x minus 1 isolated. All right, so now we're going to solve for x here. Now we're going to add 1 to both sides. All right, so you're not, let me be clear here. You're not going to add the 1 to the 25. That is, that is not something that you can do. The reason it being is that the 25 goes with the log, okay? The 25 is attached to the log. This, this log right here is one number, like some kind of decimal. So when you do this, you have log base 10 of 25 and then plus 1 on the outside. And this is equal to x, okay? So in order to not get this confused, I would just probably put the 25 in parentheses. That way there's no confusion, okay? So this is log base 10 of 25, whatever that is, and then plus 1. So this is going to clearly be a decimal because 10 raised to... Um, a power is not going to give you 25 unless you get a decimal. So let's go ahead and do this. So now we have the calculator. We can use it here. So we're going to do the, remember that the log base 10 is the same thing as the regular log, right? So I'm just going to write this as log base 25 plus 1. And then we'll get what that answer is. So we have log 25 plus 1. Enter. We got 2.3979. Uh, because we want to round that to the nearest 10,000th, um, which is to the fourth decimal. Oh, here they want us to round to the nearest thousandth, not the 10,000th. So in that case, if they want us to round that to the nearest thousandth, then we're going to have to um, round it to the third decimal digit. So 2.398. And that's to the nearest thousandth. All right, let's look at the next equation. So ln of 2x plus 3 equals 4. Remember that there's an invisible e right here. So the only way to get rid of a log is with exponentiation. So we got to raise, literally raise e to both sides power. So now these cancel because the bases match, the e's match. And now you have 2x plus 3 equals e to the fourth. Remember, e to the fourth is just a number, right? If you were to type that in, you're going to get a big number. And then we're going to solve for x here. So we're going to subtract 3 on both sides. So 2x equals e to the 4th minus 3. Then we're going to divide by 2 on both sides. So x equals e to the 4th minus 3 divided by 2. We're going to put this in parentheses here. All right. So now we're going to do this on a calculator. So we're going to need parentheses. We're going to need to do second ln so that we have e. So e to the 4th power minus 3, close parentheses, divided by 2. we got to put this numerator in parentheses when we do this calculation. Because if we don't put it in parentheses, the uh, calculator is going to mess up the order of operations here. All right, so then we enter, and we get 25.799.
All right, guys, that's it for the video. I hope you learned something new, and I'll see you in the next one.